Hello friends, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, KJ4YZI, video on another digital mode. I might be making a lot of these videos, so subscribe to YouTube channel, Ham Radio Concepts, like on Facebook, follow along, and learn. Now, recently I made a couple videos on FT8, which is a new digital mode for HF and 6 meters that has taken the bands by storm. And before I get into this video, a big shout out thank you to all the people that comment on QRZ front page and YouTube. I learn a lot from comments, but I also learn a lot of opinions. And I want you to keep your mind open for just a second and think about this vast hobby that we have, ham radio, amateur radio. This hobby gives us the ability with so many different modes, so many different frequencies, so many different classes of licenses. And we have the ability to use any kind of antenna with almost any kind of radio on any different band with any different mode. And we, we have plenty of room for everybody. So it's not about where everybody should be or what they should be using. It's about what can I try next? That's how I live ham radio and make these YouTube videos. What can I try next? So with the recent video of the FT8 that I did, if you're not familiar or you just watched that or you're not familiar with HF digital modes at all, consider this video. Check it out, and we'll go one by one and check them out. Now, FTA just came out, but JT65 has been out for a while. And they both use the same software, but what you're essentially doing, what you're seeing on the screen here, is software that is connected on my computer to my radio via a sound card interface. Now, I'm using an MFJ1204 USB radio interface. There are signal links, there are rig blasters, there are a lot of different uh, methods of connecting your computer to your radio. And what the software is doing is listening on a frequency. Uh, right now I'm on 14.076 upper sideband, which is the uh, JT65 frequency. My software and computer is listening to digital signals that look like this on a waterfall. And the reason you're seeing it on a waterfall and the reason it's displaying it is because sometimes on these digital modes, you can't even hear it. And that's the... That's the thing about these. You don't have to hear it. Scrolling through and listening for these digital modes doesn't necessarily mean they're not there. I'm going to turn up my radio right now and see what I hear. Now I hear, a, I hear some in the back. But earlier I didn't hear anything and I saw signals being decoded on my software and on the waterfall. Now if you haven't heard JT65 or you've heard this sound before, That is basically a JT65 signal. And what that is, is this software is generating a digital signaling process that is making the JT65 mode. So what's happening is the software is generating this um, digital signal in a, in a method that is able to be decoded many decibels below the noise floor. JT65 was developed in 2003. And it was developed primarily for uh, extremely weak but slow varying signals. Okay, and people use this for troposcatter, earth moon, earth bounce, regular everyday contacts, even rain scatter. And guys, I didn't even know rain scatter existed until I started researching a lot of these modes. But it can decode way below the noise floor. So let's say the band is just in such a bad shape that you can't pull out phone or CW contacts. I can guarantee at some point JT65 on certain bands may work when you don't hear anything else. That's why you see it visually and see it on the the uh, software here, but you may not hear it on your on your radio. So what it's doing is it's making these tones. JT65. Uh, this software was developed. Uh, it's it's J, J, uh, WSJTX software developed by K1JT. JT65 is his last two of his call signs, JT, which is his initials, and 65 tones. So 65 different tones modulated or signaled in a way that it would be able to be decoded well below the noise. So in comparison to FT8, FT8 only uses 8FSK modulation, so it makes it faster but not as sensitive to be decoded below the noise as JT65 would. So there are different different uh, ups and downs to all these digital modes. Some people comment and they say, well, this is not a QSO. This is just a, an exchange of information and that's it. And that's exactly what it is. It's not for everybody. I get that. Everybody gets that. 
there's some people totally against this, but in no way, shape, or form is this keeping you from being on sideband or CW. It's just another mode. There's a frequency designated for it, and there's a lot of people that are trying it because it's new for a lot of people. So JT65 would be used in the most harsh conditions to get the most rarest DX contact on the poorest band conditions, okay? Um, in comparison to FT8, now if you haven't seen my FT8 video, you can watch that after. FT8 would be 15 seconds to transmit a signal from my computer to another radio. 15 seconds, and then it would be 15 seconds of decoding the other party's response, okay? On the other side, JT65 uses 60 seconds to transmit that message. The same 13 characters, 60 seconds. That's 48 seconds of transmitting and 12 seconds of silence for decoding. Now, back in 2000, 2003, 2004, I'm sure the computers took all the processing power it could have to decode that in 12 seconds, and that's probably why it was designed that way. Nowadays, with computers being as fast as they are, it does not take 12 seconds to decode. However, um, with that being said, taking a full minute, that can mean up to seven minutes for a QS, uh, a, a contact back and forth. I don't want to say QSO because I'll get yelled at because it's not a QSO. Twelve, uh, 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 seven minutes to exchange my call sign with somebody else's call sign, our grid squares, our signal reports, and a 7-3. Now, in, back in the day when I first tried this, I related it to like watching paint dry. But there's a, there's a place for this. There's a person and a place for this at all times. Yes, there is. Um, so looking at the waterfall, um, on the left of the software here, you see stations coming in. And these in green are representing stations that are calling CQ. This guy, CQ Alpha Echo Zero Delta Charlie in Echo Mary 49 is calling CQ. Now, Within that time frame, somebody has enough time to choose who they want to respond to compared to FT8. FT8's fast. you got to know right away who you're going to respond to because after 15 seconds, it starts transmitting. But this here, if it decodes, you've got a couple seconds to figure out, okay, I'm going, to, um, I'm going to respond to this person here. And by doing that, you can click on it, and it's going to start transmitting. Uh, the signal back to him and you can start to auto sequence here it's going to fill in his call sign it's going to start calling back to him it's going to give him a signal report that the software automatically um, trans transcribes what signal it is you're not 5957 five, your your noise below or your decibels below the noise floor or however they rate it um, so closer to zero would be better zero I guess would be a really strong signal zero and above so negative 23 is pretty weak but um, so it's going to respond back and forth, and, and within a few minutes, up to like seven minutes, I guess, would take to respond with all this information back and forth. Now, with that being said, it's very imperative that your clock is set. It's a very structurized, structured uh, mode, meaning everybody has to have their clock synchronized. Your Windows or Mac software or your Windows or Mac clock may not be as accurate as you need it. So there is software out there. You can download this software, WSJTX, link is in the description, and you can rely on your Windows clock. However, if you're two seconds off, that makes a big deal. If it takes 48 seconds to send my call sign, his call sign, and a grid square or a signal report, imagine if you lose two seconds of that. That's a big deal. So you need to be on par with when they end and decode and when you start transmitting so that you're right in the time frame. And remember now that when you're transmitting, there are other people transmitting at the same time. So you can be a minute, a minute off, meaning right now if I'm decoding everybody else's that are transmitting, there's a lot of us decoding. And when I transmit, I'm transmitting with a lot of people. So you can be odd or even, even minute or first minute. Um, so you're not transmitting at the same time other people are transmitting, if that makes sense. Let's say I'm transmitting, and at the same time, someone 100 miles north of me is transmitting, and we're on the same schedule. I'm never going to talk to him unless I'm transmitting when he's decoding. So I'd have to be one minute off from him. So if I'm two seconds wrong, though, on my clock, I'm going to start transmitting two seconds after. Uh, I'm going to be transmitting two seconds after I should be stopped 
which is going to you know lose part of the information. It won't be a complete contact. So JT65, slower but more efficient than FT8. It'll work when FT8 will not. It'll work when CW and phone will not. There's a lot of people that use this for serious DX. They have a lot of QSL cards racked up from just JT65 contacts. There are people out there that work JT65 in the middle of Africa out in a field. And that's all they will ever do. And the only way you're going to work that station, which becomes a rare station, is because he's on an hour a day on JT65 and that's all he does on battery. So that there's only going to be one way to work him, and that's JT65. And at the same time, uh, you may not have any propagation on phone with him, but JT65 will decode well below the noise. So just because you can't hear it doesn't mean it's not there. As I said, some of these stations here, the, the brighter colors would be indicating stronger signals that it can receive. I hear white noise with just one station in the back. Maybe the mic's picking up, there it goes. But much like other digital modes, um, you know, there's there's an advantage to every one of them. So I encourage you to check this out if you live in an HOA and your antenna's in the attic and you don't have well, you know, I've met a lot of guys that say, I just have no luck, I'm giving up. Don't give up yet. Try a digital mode. It may not be a QSO, it may not be rag chewing for an hour, but I'm fascinated that I can take a computer and send just a few bits of information and make a contact across the world. Even if we're using a bed spring for an antenna at 5 watts on battery out in the field. You wouldn't be able to do that on sideband or phone or FM, but you'd be able to do it on JT65 and there's just some kind of fascination for me. So the software link is in the description. Uh, receive frequency would be the stations that I would be calling calling CQ and what I'd be receiving would be popping up here in red. More on a, I haven't made a contact here yet on JT65 today, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, the band over here. And on the left side, it shows you the different bands and what frequencies because there's frequency allocated for each type of digital mode. JT65, FT8, JT9, PSK. There's all kinds of frequencies so that one's not over the other. But it shows you on here the frequency you should be on and if you have rig control or cat control with your computer simply clicking on these would change the radio to that appropriate frequency and it would show you when you click on them the DX call DX grid the azimuth for a beam heading or uh, the, the distance between look up for uh, looking up that person and uh, so much more so I, I encourage you to try this it's not for everybody but subscribe to the YouTube and follow along and we'll learn a little bit about each different band uh, or each different mode on these bands and why they're just cool. Um, one more thing is with JT65 there is some sort of forward error correction so that has something I should have mentioned the forward error correction has a lot to do with decoding below the noise as well. So um, there's very various variants of JT65, A, B, and C, and JT65-2, and all kinds of them. But for the most part, a direct comparison between the FT8 video and the JT65 video I did. Try it out. You have this stuff if you've done digital before. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Give me your experience on JT65. And subscribe to YouTube. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.